best way to explain uh, mental illness is by tell, asking someone what has your worst day been like. When I was about 14, 15, uh, I started having uh, mental issues, basically depression and PTSD. I started having depression and PTSD. So, luckily for me, um, the person that noticed was my principal. Yeah? So she talked to my mom, and my mom is very supportive. When you go to hospital, you're given an evaluation, or you fill, fill out a form, answer a few questions, and from your response, they can gauge what's wrong with you. I kind of lost touch with treatment, most of mental patients do. Yeah. So it got worse later, a few years later. So I actually had to go and get hospitalized for a bit. I, at first I didn't like it. However, as I got better towards the end, the hospital was my, I don't know how to say it, but the place where you'd go to feel okay. But in the beginning, when you're starting treatment, it's normally the worst place. Most people, I remember my friends who were there, or the friends I made in hospital, when they'd come in, they didn't like it at all. But closer to the end, you'd prefer being there than leaving and then having to deal with what you're supposed to deal with. <laughs> I don't want to, I, I can't imagine what they're going through because fortunately for me, my mom was very supportive. She was aware, she was educated, so she didn't, I didn't get stigmatized for being ill. I also didn't get it in school. My teachers were understanding, yeah. So I didn't get the stigma bit. However, I can, I can see why most people are not treated for it because most, I guess in Africa or just in Kenya, most parents will think, say, if you're depressed, especially as a man, they'd be like, eh, man up, or, yeah? Or if you have uh, proper mental diseases like, say, bipolar or schizophrenia, then they'd think you're bewitched or crazy, whatever, yeah? And then abandon you. Okay? Uh, pray for you. I'm not saying prayer doesn't work, I'm just saying that there's some things like if you have malaria, they'll take you to the hospital and give you medicine and still pray for you, yeah? So some things I think most people, most parents, if they're educated or students right now, if they're educated on it, our young ones, it could really go a long way in helping a lot of people, yeah? So the people who don't get that opportunity, I bet they're going through hell, yeah? Because being sick physically is hard. Being sick mentally is the worst, yeah? Because uh, everyone gets moments of sanity, yeah? Where you realize something is wrong. But when you don't get help, fighting your yourself of fighting to be yourself is the hardest yeah yeah I've, I've seen I've seen a few symptoms in people yeah but of course you can walk up and tell them oh by the way I think you have this and this and this please go get checked or get help one because they look at you like you're crazy two medical care for people with mental illnesses or disorders are expensive very ex mental diseases and men mental illnesses are very expensive to treat yeah uh, mostly because uh, it's not really readily available in Kenya yeah you'll find that probably any if you ask anyone in Kenya where do you go to get help for any mental disease and they'll tell you Madare yeah, because it's probably the only one they know. If you ask them, if you're sick right now, say you've broken your leg, where would you go? There are thousands of hospitals, just in Nairobi. 
Africa. Uh, secondly, I went to a private hospital where there are more options, yeah, especially medically, the medicines that you get. Uh, in places like Madare, I bet you 100% you'll find the cheapest medicine, which normally has the most side effects, yeah, and then the most for me, the most expensive medicine, I remember one pill used to cost about 500 bob, yeah? And then maybe you have to take three of those a day, yeah? And it's not the only medicine you have, yeah? So that's 1,500 a day. Very few Kenyans would be able to afford that, yeah? Uh, also, you'll pay for the doctor's fee, you'll pay for uh, bed, you pay for food, yeah? When you're in hospital, and then you pay for uh, therapy, because normally they'll have group therapy, and then your own specific therapy just for you as a patient, which you also have to pay for, which comes to quite a sum. Yeah. And no one is, well, those who are willing don't have the money, most of them, and those who are not willing will use that as an excuse. Yeah, because they'll say, why are we paying all this when we could be paying for the other school fees or using it for something else. Yeah, so a lot of people don't get help because of that. Yes, uh, actually, I've, one of the things that you get to get taught during uh, therapy is how to deal with this. You're given steps on how to uh, basically deal with issues that come up. Yeah? I'm not saying I can never get it in the future. Yeah? That's up to whatever happens in your life. But I have skills to deal with. If something like that happens again, I have skills to deal with it. Mental illness is one of the most ignored uh, subjects in Kenya. Even in school, though I, I had the support, no one would actually talk about it. Yeah, they wouldn't ask you, "Oh, how are you feeling?" Or yeah, "Is today a good day, a bad day?" Normally, when you have any other disease, they will say, "Do you have headaches? Do you yeah, are you in pain?" You know. Yeah. So they'd be supportive, but I guess out of lack of education, they didn't know how to support someone with mental illnesses. Yeah. So if you're not okay then they generally can't help yeah or they think the only way for you to get help is send you back to hospital yeah so i think there's a lot that needs to be done a lot i think i think the, the best way to explain uh, mental illness is by tell, asking someone what has your worst day been like your, des your most desperate point, yeah? What has it been like? I'm not talking about when you don't have uh, money. I'm talking about the day when you don't have money. No one will help you, and you're wondering what your next step is. What would you like done for you on that day, yeah? If you, if you know of anything that can be done to you on that day, it's the same thing you should do for that mental patient you know or someone who's suffering from mental illness. If you think they haven't eaten, give them food. If you can afford to get them therapy, if you can afford to give them something warm to wear. Because these things affect their mental health. Yeah? Not eating for someone who has depression uh, or any other illness makes them more sick. Yeah? I bet when you're hungry, you can, your mood goes low, yeah? When you eat, you're happier, yeah? So the things that you can do that can help, even though you don't have uh, a lot to do or to help someone with. For example, food is very important. Your diet, yeah? Eating properly. I'm not talking about eating uh, a certain type of food every day. You need uh, your balanced diet every day, three meals a day. Yeah, so those things are very important. Uh, just being there for someone is important. Mental disorders in most studies start by the mid-teens and the mid-twenties.
I think uh, if there was a way to educate people, yeah, on mental illnesses, say maybe through a TV show, or maybe like uh, part of the medical training for students is um, you go to a certain school and keep them aware of, get people aware of the disease, yeah, like the way they do for polio. Everyone knows when the polio vaccine is going on. Yeah? It's mental illness is that serious. Yeah? Mental illness is human. I'm a mother. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mama, Mama Muni. Mm -hmm. And I'm Toto. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that's it. I'm a sister, I'm a wife. I'm mm -hmm. a. Yeah. We did the burial. Mm -hmm. After the burial, like, we went home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you know, from there, mm -hmm. I, I remember it was uh, a few days after the burial. Mm -hmm where I was, I was, I was, I was seated at, mm -hmm. I was seated, I was with my mom mm -hmm. and with my sister. Mm -hmm. We were just having a normal conversation. Mm -hmm. And then from there, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, if anyone who's gone through CS will tell you, mm -hmm. sometimes you're not advised to sit for long hours, mm -hmm. sometimes you just want to sleep or just relax. Mm -hmm. And again, sometimes it can be very painful, so you just want to, you know, at least lay down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I was there and um, I started feeling strange mm -hmm. in my body. Mm -hmm. So I was listening. I was listening to some worship song and uh, mm -hmm. after that period, I remember I wanted to write something on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I wanted to. I think I was just writing and encouraging. Like before then, mm -hmm. I was writing. I was. I was uploading photos of of my baby. I was uploading my photos with uh, like the whole thing mm -hmm. about my pregnancy journey i had never like you know updated it anywhere so i was updating it mm -hmm. and just you know consoling myself that you know all i'll be okay i'll be fine after all this mm -hmm. after after all this um uh episode mm -hmm. so i remember mm -hmm. i started I, I just took my bible like because the i think i was feeling pain mm -hmm. i was like where i was the physical pain yeah the physical CS. pain yeah, from the cs so mm -hmm. i was feeling the physical pain and then I just said I decided to just take my Bible mm -hmm. and read. Mm -hmm. I remember reading the book of Revelation, I think chapter five. Mm -hmm. And then from that time mm -hmm. a huge force mm -hmm. like came over me. Mm -hmm. I started shivering. I started shivering. I started shivering. Mm -hmm. And on doing that, I found myself praying. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. I was praying, I was praying, I was praying, I was praying and before I realized it, I think I had already torn the Bible. Like I was holding my Bible mm -hmm. and I tore it into pieces. Mm -hmm. You get? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I was just okay mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden like I'm tearing the Bible. Mm -hmm. Piece, piece, piece by piece by piece by piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know at that particular time, because it was a few days from the hospital, mm -hmm. at that particular time the scar was still very fresh. So I'm not supposed to like Extreme yeah, activities. any extreme activity. I'm not supposed to do it. So I just turned out of the house. I don't know. I think I was probably going to the grave or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I turned out of the house, mm -hmm. calling, you know, names. Mm -hmm. Maki Ben. I remember calling Maki and Ben. I don't know who those people are. Mm -hmm. And before then, I think I had I had spoken very strange words to my sister. I told her. Mm -hmm. I think by, like, all this. I think started at around. 10 p.m. at night. Mm -hmm. I was telling them, and I was writing some things. I think I have a notebook where I wrote a lot of things. I wrote my eulogy. I wrote, I, I wrote my eulogy, and I told my sister when, when, when my husband comes, because my husband at that time, mm -hmm. I, all this was happening in Voy. At that particular time, he was in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I told him, like, um, I'm, I've written a lot of secrets in this notebook. Mm -hmm. When my husband comes, make sure you give it to him. Mm -hmm. When my pastor, I think I was referring to a certain pastor, when this pastor comes, make sure you give him this mm -hmm. notebook. Mm -hmm. At ar by around uh, 12, mm -hmm. I will be dead. 
but don't worry, after three days I will resurrect. Mm -hmm. And so they were wondering, what is this girl talking about? What, what do you mean, like she, you will resurrect after three days or something like that? And I told her, I'm going to shock the world because I'm going to resurrect with my baby. Mm -hmm. So all this time they were confused. Mm -hmm. What is this lady talking about? What does she mean she's going to resurrect? What does she mean she's going to die? And I told my sister, I can tell mom, because mm -hmm. at that particular time, mm -hmm. mom had gone, I think my mom was in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. When I was having this conversation, I told I told my mom to excuse us. I want to tell my sister some things. So okay, they are used to me. They they, they like they of course this side of me was weird. Mm -hmm. So when I told her excuse us, she just excused. She just excused us. So yeah, yeah I told my sister, but around uh, at around uh, twelve, I'll be dead. I remember calling people. Mm -hmm. I called my husband's friend and I told him, you pray for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I feel like. At around twelve, mm -hmm. I will be, I will be dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you, if you, if you want to pray for me, you pray for me. I called people. I called a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Some of them were not picking because it was at night. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I stormed out of the house, mm -hmm. and I was like prophesying. You know, like tell, like if you come to me, I tell you, where were you, Uli? Where, like I was speaking bigger things, you know, I, will, I can remember telling someone, oh, okay, my, my dad is late, mm. so I was telling this man, do you know the daughter that you lost, the daughter that has been in the streets, uh, your daughter Jail, now I was referring myself to us, Jail, my name is Kate, but my name is, so Jail, well, I once did a movie, mm -hmm. I, I, I think that is the problem with mental illness, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you, you really can't explain it. So when I was referring, I was referring to Jail. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a movie I acted where I was referred to as Jail. So I was telling this man, you remember your daughter Jail, the one that has always been on the streets, is now here. Jail, Matabu, you've gone through a lot of problems, like referring to, mm -hmm. to myself. Mm -hmm. So people were wondering. I, I was just telling, Mom, Mom, you've gone through a lot of problems. Your problems are over. So my mom was wondering, what is this lady talking about? And at that particular time, mm -hmm. when all this thing, when all this is happening, mm -hmm. there were people had come out of their houses because mm -hmm. I was screaming at the top of my, Maggie Ben, and people are wondering who is this Maggie and Ben? You Jenny, you just come and come and see, come and see. today is the end. Today is the end. I, people are wondering the end to what? I was shouting. I was running. I was telling if you move closer to me, you will become blind. Like, you know, I was speaking weird stuff. People do not understand what is she saying, mm -hmm. you know. I remember all that continued for a period of time. Mm -hmm. At around three, I think they just decided to take me to the hospital where I had given birth. Mm -hmm. So when I, I got there, I told them, mm -hmm. uh, no, I was not speaking. I don't know what they told the, I don't know, the nurses or whoever they were talking to. But I remember telling a certain nurse, nurse, God is real, God is real, God is real. So they are wondering, what is this? The movie that I once acted is called God is real. Mm -hmm. But now, at this point, mm -hmm. they, they were not connecting, like, God is real. What do you mean, God is real? Mm -hmm. So I was given some tab. Mm -hmm. I remember I was given some tablets, though I was not willing to take any medication at that particular time. Mm -hmm. I was given some tablets. Later on, I was told that they were supposed to, you know, make me sleep. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. these people waited for me to sleep. I could not sleep at that at that particular time. So I remember, like it's a distance from where we live to where my grandfather is. At that time, my grandfather was sick. Mm -hmm. So I was telling them, "You take me to my take me to my grandfather. Mm -hmm. I want to see him. I want to talk to him." Mm -hmm. And they were wondering, "You are sick. Why do you want to go and see another sick person. sick person?" Mm -hmm. Like I was weird. And I told them, I remember this. Mm -hmm. I told them, "Okay, so if you have refused to take me to where he is." then may his soul rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And so people are wondering, this girl is crazy, he's weird, he's talking some things that we can't understand. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, somehow, like, they took me back home, mm -hmm. and I told them, okay, so because you've refused to take, take me to where my grandfather is, mm -hmm. let me sleep, mm -hmm. but mark my words. Mm -hmm. So I got home and slept. Mm -hmm. And early in the morning, I remember, like, when I woke up, that's when I had, like, those, like, I heard that it's true, my grandfather has passed on. Like, you know, when I'm telling them, may he rest in peace, he was still okay, and he was, he was, he was, he was fine. 
so now after like those are those were after like when that incident happened i think it was grief on top of grief but so when they told me now your grandfather has finally passed on i told them so so what like why are you even telling me this i remember now from that time like i think the like i don't know uh things changed uh, some things changed because i remember taking a can of uh nescafe mm -hmm. like nikai koroga yote kwa kikombe like you know i wanted to take something very kong and i was saying this is what jesus did like i was doing the way jesus <laughs> change water into wine not wine mm -hmm. on the cross he was given something bitter to take so i told them now yes wanakunywa anakunywa chubiri and i took a whole of you know like you, you can you can imagine a kind of nest cafe and i have just you know studied with a little water and i was taking it it was bitter and i was telling them yes this is what jesus did he took our sins and our bitterness <laughs> all this time people are one wondering what is this this girl there were a lot of incidences i remember there was a time i would just wake up and just be on the bed and if they ask me i'm like what's wrong with this i'd get into the shower like i'm not supposed to like you're not supposed to like shower when you go through cs for a period of time because you the, the sky is not supposed to have any contact with water so for me i would just enter and and strip my clothes regardless of whoever was there men women children anyone who came like seeing me i'll just remove my clothes i was just weird and so when they try to control me, I'd be very violent. I remember there was a time I saw my sister. She was wearing this chain. I told her, remove that chain because it's demonic. And she was like, ah, what do you mean? You know, I jumped, I jumped to where she was and I grabbed it. Like, it's like I wanted to strangle her. I had a lot of incidences that we can call here for a long period of time. For a long time, like, now I could not sleep, I could not eat, I could not drink. I was just there, seated. The much I could do is warm water. I remember at some point at night, I just stormed again, and I, I wanted to like I, I wanted to to hide. I was hiding somewhere because all this time I thought people are out there. There are people who are looking for me. There are people who want to do away with my life. There are people who want to kill me. You know, I, I will just storm out of the house with a pillow, thinking that I'm carrying my baby. My baby. Kate was diagnosed with postpartum psychosis. Women experience 22 times more psychotic or mania episodes in postpartum period than in any other periods of their lives. Postpartum psychosis PP is a rare and severe disease. The prevalence of postpartum psychosis has been reported to be between 0.1 to 0.2%. Our hospitals should look into some of these things because like when i went there i don't i don't know if they were told what i was suffering from because after tablets that was it so from there my like my my my, my relatives were helpless they didn't know what it was some people were some people thought it was a demonic attack some people thought like a lot of things that people could think of <laughs> it's important that we know that mental is illness is human and it's not for for a given group of people like for probably the rich the poor or people who are possessed people who did some things it's a disease it's an illness that can get anyone like anyone can feel can get into it so yeah so let's not teach it like something that does not happen it happens and we need help when you see that sister, when you see that brother, who you call mad, who you call crazy, do you know? Do you know? Do you understand what they're going through? What they're feeling? Cause mental is human. Mental is human. Mental is human. Mental is human. Human.
Using drugs can also make the symptoms of mental illnesses worse and make treatment less effective. Anyone who has or is vulnerable to mental illness is therefore strongly discouraged from using drugs. If you say schizophrenia and madness is just one and the same word. This is about drugs, but the, uh, most of them, even if though it is drugs, when you check on the family history, it's an underlying something. Some of them, are, it is in the family. This problem was there. It just needed the, the, the kind of drugs they are taking to trigger it. These people should know that they are, when they, they, they take uh, anything like bang or they abuse drugs, the, in the family, because it is there, it's an underlying problem, it just triggers. Even cigarettes just triggers some of these, just cigarettes. They get anger, they talk rudely, and then they start talking things that are not there. They fight their families, they fight in their homes, they hear sounds, they start breaking things at night, they become violent, some of them. Some of them won't just walk, 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 walk everywhere they feel like walking. Taking care of somebody like that. Say your son is, is about 20 years, 25, where you are expecting that your son will start earning for himself. This boy now is your child again. You have to dress, you have to feed him, you have to find him a place. And most of them, is, you stay with them in the houses, they are violent. Like some of them, when they, they have hallucinations, they start breaking things at night. In the morning, you find they are nothing. They say they were fighting with somebody. They say there was somebody who was following them. So these are risks. You have like to keep knives away from them in the house because you cannot keep weapons near them because you don't know what they'll think next because you don't know what he's thinking. It's not a case you're sure that he'll heal tomorrow, especially with bang. The, you don't know this patient will heal tomorrow. It will take him another 10 years to heal. So here you have a grown-up who is still a child you're going to take care of. Here is a grown-up where you're going to feed him almost all his life. Here is a grown-up whom you don't know what his next move will be. There are those who are suicidal. There are those who become violent and they start beating up people. There are those who cannot stay even in the society. You have to get them away from the society. So some of the parents leave them on the streets. They are there in the streets. They fight people. They do anything. They sleep where they want. Not because they want them to be in the streets. First, it is a shame for our parents to be told these are parents of the madman. Second, though, they don't even know what to do. One I have is a 33-year-old. He started smoking bang when he was in primary school. Then it, he, when he was in Form 3, he just got sick. He had problems with the school. He didn't complete his school, and he started that. The parents took care of him for a long time. Then, then they just like got tired of not knowing what to do next. As a society, people should recognize that there is treatment and counseling. First treatment, then after, there is counseling. So many people will not seek medical advice or counseling services. First, they will go for the prayers, for the witchcraft, if they, they, they practice in the families. In mother, it's very cheap, but the parents, most of them are not well educated. When you are told your child is doing such and such a thing, you don't take the interest to go deeper into it or to engage a counselor at the beginning. You just wait and talk, wait and talk. We treat them as if they are not there. This is not a person on his own. And even when he's near you, you talk about him, you don't talk directly to him. It's as if he's not there. And we don't give them the love that they need. Because if you give them love, they see you're talking to them nicely, you're talking them to them like people, most of them will come up very fast, you heal very fast. But those ones who are thrown out on the streets, they, 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 they are not talked to, there's nobody to give them love, then these ones will continue. We we'll be on the streets, we we'll not have a place to live in because the people are not taking them like people. They are mad people. These people are people. They are humans. They need to heal. Most of them, you ask them, they tell you, you think I don't want to leave this. Most of them go back because of the underlying problem. It's not treated. They, they, are, they don't get the support. They don't have the money to go to the hospital. They go back to Kumikumi. Don't take them as if they are not human. Mentor is human too. Human too. <laughs> My name is Mary Omolo. I'm a makeup artist. I've been a makeup artist, been doing makeup for four years now. I do weddings, I do video shoots, photo shoots. I've done adverts and now I'm into film. 
what I went through in 2016. I've battled depression and suicidal thoughts. Suicidal thoughts, yes. So the journey, the pain, the fear, and me being here now. Okay, depression is you feeling like you're in a sunken place. Just a lost place where you do not understand your emotions. You do not understand what is going on. You do not understand why you feel the way you feel. You don't understand why you want to cry and no one is there. And the minute you get to the point where you want to now end your life, you feel like now that is going to be the end of the pain. The end of everything that you're actually going through, the end of people not wanting you around. For me it began um, when I lost my, actually quit my job. I used to work for a company, I won't mention the name. But I love you, my boss, if you'll ever see this. <laughs> yeah, I used to work for them and I got this opportunity to go and work in Maldives. I used to do very well. And um, I sold everything in my house because I needed to raise the fare to go there, um, money for visa and stuff like that. So I sold everything because I asked for help from family, from friends, please help me, I need to raise this money. I needed 160K in a period of a month. I had one month to raise that money. And then when we were about to leave, the government said people are not allowed to go to Arabic countries. So money lost, everything. You've sold even your spoons. That's when I knew when people coming to my house, everyone was just eyeing stuff. Because when I said I'm selling things, my friends came, they bought my bed. People were telling me, I'm buying your bed the way it is. With that duvet, with the pillows, with everything. I needed the money, I got the money. For me, my motto is, in life is, you need, this has to be done. We don't care how you do it, just do it. When we were supposed to leave now for Maldives, we were told you can't go. And you have spent the money that you've, you got from selling everything from your savings. And um, you, you don't have a job. You have to move back home. You've stayed alone for four or five years. So going back home is just crazy. It's you going in and starting afresh. And I stayed there for a month. Mama uh, and that's the person who actually made me realize where well, it's, it's getting serious. Because this, this time I was walking, I was going to the shop and she stopped me. She's like, Mary, Sasa, fit. Naza kuliza kitu no sika sirike. Kwenye show. Mbono na jiongele shanga ukitembea? I'm like, eh? Mujiongele shat, yeah. Mdome yako tundu mtu anwana ki move. But no one can tell what you're saying. But you're just talking to yourself. So it hit me, by the way. Uh-uh. You cannot pity yourself that much. You find and cut after job, got a job. And then I didn't enjoy that place because it's nothing close to makeup. It was just a place where I, I get there and I'm depressed. I'm a lover of makeup. So I, it was a tea company. So uh, I was the marketing manager, assistant marketing manager. Yes, the money is good, but I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. So I left. I stayed, I think I worked there for six months, six or three. So I left, moved into a bed sitter because I moved from my parents' house. It was actually like a single room. Started again from scratch. You don't have a mattress, you don't have anything. And then gigs are not coming in now. You're, you're supposed to get like weddings. People are booking you, but they're cancelling the last minute. So you do not have money for rent. Now it, it, I got to a point where I'm like, how can I not pay 6,000 for rent? I used to pay more, what's happening? No gigs, no nothing, I'm just at home. Month after month, after month, after month. No food. And then I'm this person who, I won't tell you that things are not happening. I'll just be there laughing. 
I used to go to friends' places. They think Mary is visiting. No, Mary, I'm a cool. Pick a story with you, we chop a story, and then when we eat, I'm like, good Lord, I'm eating food. I started talking to guys in church, and then they started <laughs> being scarce. They're like, uh -uh. when you're around Mary, she'll just complain and complain and complain. So I stopped going to church, because why am I going there? If I can't get people who I can actually tell what's happening in my life. It got to a point where now I can even go to church and stand in them alone, like the whole time. People are just walking around you, as in, it's just you now. So, it was like the worst feeling in the world. So I didn't want to be there. There's this lady, she used to come to my place and pray. I really appreciated her. She's called Diana. Diana would come, she'd be like, Sinado, but let me pray for you. She would pray and pray and pray. And then I'll be like, I'm hopeful. Yay. And then the minute she leaves, I'm back. I'm back to zero again. Because I do not understand what is happening, you know. I just hope that their church understands what depression is in the first place. Because if they don't understand it, they won't know how to help you. Because for me, for me to actually go back to church now is... I comforted myself and said, maybe they don't understand what depression is. That's the only way I can sit in church and look at my pastor speak and I'm like, yeah, so you're speaking to me. But there's this friend of mine, Maureen. Maureen has been with me since 2010. We met in 2010. And we've been friends since then. When now depression became like something super real for me, it was a point where I could stay two weeks without taking a shower and I don't care. I do not leave my bed. I do not talk to anyone. You'll knock my door. Remember, it's just like a single room, so I won't say at nearly quite a bedroom. You'll knock my door, I'll just be there, seated. But Maureen would come and she'll be like, Fungo, I'm long, I don't care. Maureen would just come and sit. I'll shave your mom, Because now in that single room, plates are all over the place. Eh, clothes are everywhere. I don't want to move. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to talk. And she understood it. She used to come. Atamka, umeshinda jeleo? Kopa. She does whatever she's doing. Remember, I don't have money. <laughs> so she used to give me. I Nikotuna 50 bob. Neza kupatia 20. She goes by Mandazi, come prepares tea. Ukule, sa. And then she goes, because she has to go to work the next day. She's the one who was there for me, not even my family, because they didn't know. I'm that kind of a person who can stay for months without even looking for them. I remember one day, I, my landlord came. She needed rent. I hadn't paid rent for, was it three months? I had the best landlord. I think it was three months of four. And now I'm like, why am I getting this money? Because it's piling up. I went out in Konmenda Kubai Skons Taskies. Got there, and then I see a chemist, and I'm like, hmm, let's see. Went and asked, um, if I use one period, will it help me sleep? They're like, eh, Moji talks idea. I'm like, cool. Billy? Eh, Billy talks idea. Tattoo. Madam, not to nini na period on. It can be another thing, so I just want to know about Piriton. And if I take like six, that guy said, I'm not selling you Piriton. I'm not giving you. But I was so happy, finally I know if I take like three, at a go, it's dangerous. So I went to another chemist and said, Ni pesangapi? Ten bok moja. I had a sock. I gave them. But yeah, that's ten. Went back home. I prepared a meal. Make a I'm ready for death. <laughs> and then, um, in my mind, the things that were coming was, um, what will my parents say when I'm dead? After I'm dead, will now everyone from church come and say, Mary was a very good person. I'm like, no, I don't want them to actually come. So, 
my bills are there to your mesa. I had like a small table because the couple drew, I was so ready. And then um, I took my tea and my teaspoon and slept without taking any pill. The next day in the morning, till date, I don't know where Isu does Leander. I don't know. I can't find them. But that time, in my mind, I was like, what would people say? Would they even notice that I'm gone? And would they say that I won? Or what will they say? Over 800,000 people die due to suicide every year. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in 15 to 29 year olds. You know, our dosi. Anywho, <laughs> what I'd say is, human beings have emotions. We we get happy, we get sad. We should not have like. When you see someone in the streets and you're like, that is not the kind of a person I talk to. What would people think if they see me talking to that person? Just know that that person, just you talking to them and asking them how they're doing, just buying them bread maybe if it's someone in the street. Because if it's someone who, I don't want to say it, it is just lost. But mental is human. Mental is human. <laughs> Mental is human, 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 mental is human